Welcome back. This video will cover the inspection, maintenance, and repair of body cords. This is the first in the series, and the reason being because 99% of the problems that we discover when we come to a strip call at a national event are body cords. As a matter of fact, the armorer's mantra is ITBCS. It's the body cord, stupid. Body cords are some of the most abused pieces of equipment in the entire fencing community. But they are essential to the proper working of the equipment. There are basically two styles, the foil saber body cord and the epee body cord. The epee body cord is characterized by two three-pronged pins on each end of the cord. The foil and saber has three on one end, two on the other, and then a separate wire with the clip. The other cord that we're interested in is the mass cord for foil and saber. It can be either coiled with straight sections, fully coiled, or straight, which has two clips on either end. A note about the clips. The clips are called crocodile clips. Reason being is because they are square-nosed, like a crocodile, not pointed-nosed like an alligator. The items that you'll need for the maintenance and repair of your body cords are the following. A screwdriver. Masking tape. An electric screwdriver wire strippers, and for quick diagnosis you can use a multifunction small test box. Or if you're inspecting equipment to make sure that it's within specification, you can use a larger ohmmeter based test box. If you're going to use your small test box to test body cords, you plug in the three prong end into one end, you take your screwdriver and short across the two pins. If the words, if both pins are working, you should get a light that shows up. In foil, it will be the red light. This means that the two lines that are connected to those pins are both working. If you take the clip and you clip it to either one of the pins, then you will get another light. All this tells you is that, yes, those lights are working. The problem with body cords, though, is that it's not just a broken wire. It's an intermittent wire, which means there's a break or a loose connection on the inside, which will cause the, the connection to break intermittently. This is the common cause of a flashing white light in foil. Therefore, if you use a test box that has an ohmmeter in it, what you want to do is go ahead and plug it in to the ends, making all your connections. Holding them tight, wiggle the wires to make sure that your needle doesn't jump. If your needle starts jumping around, then that means you've got an intermittent break or a break within the lines. This particular box has a switch that tests each line separately, so you go through each of the different settings and chest. This particular one has a bad connection on what was called the A-line. Let me go back and, and explain. In fencing, the lines are, num are lettered A, B, and C. This is consistent through all of the, of the weapons and the scoring because these two, the A and the B, are essential to make the EPE work, which we'll cover in a different video. And the B and the C is for the foil. Now that we've discovered that this particular body cord is not working correctly, we're going to, as we say, crack its chest. And what we're going to do is we're going to take a piece of tape and place a piece of it over the side of the connector that has the nuts on it.
This simple step will save you a lot of grief in the fact that it will keep the nuts within the connector so that when you take it apart, you don't lose them. So next, you use your little handy power drill to go ahead and remove the screws from the connector. Be sure that you do it with the heads of the screws facing up so that when you take it apart, they stay in place. And lay them down such. As we see, the inside of the connector has the three pins in their locations. What is important is that when you take it apart is to remember which is the C line. Normally what I do is I take a magic marker and I'll put a mark on that particular line to remind me so that that's where it goes so that you don't end up switching them when you put it back together. We determined that the A line was bad on this particular one. What you do on this particular on this wire is you go ahead and pull it and when you pull it you will see a thinning of the insulation. That's where your break is. So you want to take your wire strippers, cut it at that point, and then strip off about an eighth of an inch of insulation. When you do that, you want to inspect the wire to make sure that it isn't completely corroded and causes high resistance. Corrosion is a very bad thing within body cords and it's very easily done because fencers sweat. Sweat is made up of electrolytes which like copper and it causes them to corrode and there thus increases the resistance in the wire. Once you've stripped it, remove the old wire using your smaller screwdriver, pull it out, set it aside. Now, some armorers will take the step of taking and soldering the ends of the wire to maintain either continuity or to help with the resistance. Put the pin back on and tighten it back down. Take care not to over tighten because if you break the heads off this you've lost this pin and you can't fix it or repair it. Since we're looking at body cords in this particular A-line, the clip right now, the thing you want to inspect on the clip, there are a couple of things. Number one, is the wire visibly soldered to the clip? You need to make sure that when you look at it, though, that the solder is not just a big blob that is sitting on top of the connector. You want to make sure that it is smooth because that means that the clip has been brought up to the proper temperature and the solder has flowed and made a good connection. Otherwise, you have an intermittent connection where it's flopping around and not making good contact with the metal. The other thing you want to inspect the clip for is corrosion itself, especially on the inside where it makes connection with the lame. This particular clip is very, very rusted on the inside and probably has problems when it connects with the lame. Take a wire brush and brush off that co corrosion and then put a light coat of either silicon wax or machine oil on it to keep it from uh, corroding even further. Another thing that you need to check on your clips is that these little retaining pins here over time can work themselves loose and they'll fold up this way. When that happens then the clip itself will fall apart. In order to prevent that what you can do is take a pair of pliers, loosen them up, and as seen here you twist those little prongs slightly, about 45 degrees, and that will prevent them from sliding through the slots and your clip falling apart. Now comes the tricky part of putting a body cord back together, and that is getting all the pins in the right place. A good friend of mine, Bob Leitner, who is also helping me with these videos, has come up with what he calls the helping hand. Now, you can use several things as a helping hand. You can use your test box, or you can use Bob's little helping hand here, which is a block of wood with three sockets in it. 
you do is you take your pins and you put them in the particular sockets. Now remember we put the mark, the black mark for the C line, which means that will go to that side. And you put these in your sockets. Making sure that the square edges of the, of the pins are all parallel, you take the connector, hold it to the back side, take the other, clip it together, making sure that all the wires are inside and not caught in between the two pieces. Once they're in place, again, go back and double check to make sure that they're all square. Reverse your drill. And screw it back together. Take your tape off. and you're done. For foil and saber body cords, they often have a retainer clip in them. The clips are essential for keeping the body cord attached to the weapon while you're fencing. These are particularly tricky in taking apart because there is a spring within the inside. It also has a small two millimeter screw that holds them together. The screw often will come loose and go flying across the room and your retainer will end up going in different directions. A technique for taking these apart and putting them back together is if you remove the screw and slowly release the pin and the spring from the back side, when you take it off, keep it upright and the screw in place. Then you can remove the pin and the spring. If you're a foilist or a saberist and you lose this spring and there's an epidemic that you don't particularly care for, you can go over and remove the spring from his tip and replace the spring on your retainer. Yes, this is an epe pressure spring. Putting these back together can be a pain because you're trying to push in on a spring and have a screwdriver on a small screw. My technique for this is to take the retainer with the screw and hold it in place with my forefinger. Then I take the retainer and the pin and I put it in and I find the little hole and then you just turn the retainer itself without having to worry about holding a screwdriver and screwing in the little screw against the spring. You get that down and then you just tighten it up and you're done. One of the other common problems that you have with body cords is that these are maintain, maintained in pressure in the sockets by means of little springs. On some you have what's called a leaf spring, which is a long spring that goes the entire long length of the prong, or you have a roll cage that will spin on the prong. This will sometimes build up corrosion between the cage and the pin. So if you're bored with nothing else to do and you're watching fencing, you can take your body cord and you can spin the cage and remove the corrosion between the cage and the pin. The issue with the leaf springs is, is that after a while they will tend to collapse. What you want to do is take your screwdriver and be sure that you keep your fingers away from the pin because if this slips this will go through your your finger but you want to go in and just lightly spread these out so that you maintain contact and you do this occasionally again when you're sitting around bored not a, nothing else to do at a tournament or even at home and you just spread those out occasionally and that will maintain contact between the socket and the pin so, we've covered the inspection, 
the maintenance and the repair of the body cores. One last note on the maintenance of body cords, and that is the proper way to store and fold them. You want to take your body cord, fold it in half, fold it in half again, and then make an overhand loop. This way you don't put undue stress on the wires and cause them to break. Thank you for watching this video on the care and feeding of body cords. Please be sure to visit my website, thearmorerstore.com, for further information and techniques and equipment for inspection and repair. Thank you.